Hi, this is Roxy for Rox TV. Today I'm with Jeremy Kling, drummer wonder kid, um, and a very busy man indeed. He's worked with, working with Venom Inc., Massacre, he's front of house for Exodus, he's a drummer with The Absence, he's front of house for Sepultra, he's a boss of listenable, listenable insanity records, you name it. This guy's there. It's a wonder he has time to shit, quite frankly. Anyway, he's managed to squeeze us in for a quick interview. So here goes. Jeremy Kling. Um, Jeremy, I mean, <laughs> I've been looking through the kind of things you're involved in. And I think the, the shorter way of putting it would be what project you're not involved in at the moment. You're one very busy <laughs> guy, aren't you? Yeah, I, I try to be. Try to be. I mean, you're the drummer with Venom Inc., Massacre. You're the front of house for Exodus. You work with The Absence. You're front of house for Sepultra. You're the boss of Listenable Insanity Records. Uh, anything else I've missed? Um, yeah, there's quite a bit. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's, that's a good place to start, though. Tell us uh, about Venom Inc., then. Let's start there. Uh, well, I I guess where that originated from was I was on tour with Sepultura doing front of house for them when they were out with uh, Testament in the States. And um, I had met Chuck before because the absence had covered into the pit, so uh, we kind of we've kind of crossed paths. But on that tour, everybody, you know, everyone's working and living together. And so Chuck was at the time managing uh, Venom and... Uh, they were going out on tour in September of, uh, I believe it was 2016, or 2017, uh, and they needed a front of house guy, and Chuck was like, yep, here's my number one, and turned me over to uh, John Zazula, was managing Venom at the time, and uh, it kind of just kind of just went from there. I got hired on at the gig, and we, we got along great. Those those Brits are something else. <laughs> Those Brits are something else. Such a good time. Always a laugh, man. They always, like, the thing is, they could always get me to just laugh without doing anything. Like, they just start saying some story, and I'm like, oh, fuck. F fucking hell, right? I'll just start dying laughing. I'm like, totally hooked. So we uh, we carried on real well, and we lived together, and on that tour, we went through some uncomfortable stuff. We went through some real comfortable stuff, and we had some killer times. And... And when Abaddon, all that, uh, you know, madness happened with him, they gave me a call and they were like, look, we're going out with uh, suffocation. Actually, John Zulu gave me a call, said we're going out with suffocation and uh, in Europe. I want to know if you wanted to play with us. <laughs> At that point, you know, that's like every little, uh, little kid's dream. You're like, this is the phone call. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's, uh, this is what that phone call is like. So it was like, let's go. Fantastic. Day one, day one, like, uh, we, we rehearsed together, and, uh, I don't know, I'm a pretty reserved drummer, like, um, I'm technically reserved, I, I control, like, I, my whole technique is really, really focused, and with that band, I just really let go, and just played as hard as I possibly could, and, like, which I've never even played drums like that, but, but I just felt like that, uh, that band needed that, or it called for that. And uh, first rehearsal we did, I broke my snare top, and I broke, like, nine uh, nine sticks, which is totally nuts. I don't ever do that. But I broke the snare head, and uh, <laughs> so we're at some rehearsal place in Bristol, so it's kind of nuts. Uh, and then it, then it really just went from there, you know? It just uh, it's shifted from there. Is the, the kind of Venom Inc. and Venom feud still going on? I mean, how's that? working out for the guys um there's no real like there's no real like public mud slinging anything like that it's never been like that they have their own reasons why both of them both of them don't like each other uh and i don't i don't know conrad's uh reasons i'm actually not really too sure but i mean i, I hear wins from other camps and but it's nothing that's there's no, there's no mudslinging. There's no, it's not weird like that at all. Like, I, I mean, I, I know that some feuds are like public between, you know, some bands. 
X members, but this one, it's not. It's nothing like that. It's good to hear. Yeah, you know, it really makes the work environment much more pleasant than at that point. And uh, the work environment in Venom Inc. is uh, its actually damn near close to perfect. It's uh, smooth. Every, us, us three get along great. I mean, really great. Really great. Like brothers. And I've had, you know, I have an actual brother. I mean, so, I mean, I grew up with that. I understand what what a brotherhood bond is. And I feel that very strongly with those guys, which is fucking wonderful. That's great stuff. Um, tell us about Massacre as well, because, I mean, it's similar music in one way, but in another way, very different. Yeah, you know, you know what's crazy is uh, I realized how big Abaddon's influence is once I filled his shoes. Uh, you know, and that guy has done a lot, you know, and I know he's, like, coined as, um, I know he's coined as, like, oh, he's he's just a sloppy drummer or whatever. I mean, in I know that a lot of people, like, that's part of, like, the mystique for Venom is that they just didn't give a shit. No. You know, <laughs> they just fucking threw it at it, you know, and... That's and, and that's again. That's why I think I play the drum the drums the way I do in this thing because it's like ah, it's just you know, it's fucking venom. It's it's a wall of we don't give a fuck really, and which is kind of <laughs> it's kind of cool. It's actually pretty badass. And I realize that uh, like how what kind of an influential role that Abaddon had in in drummers even like Bill Ward or uh, pardon me, Bill Andrews from uh, Massacre. Uh, Bill Ward is obviously. An influence on all of us. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Bill Andrews, his playing style reminds me a lot of Abaddon, a lot, and a lot of other drummers too. And he's he's another one who's really killer and has a, has a big influence on drummers. I mean, a lot of guys were those first couple Death Records that he played on were crucial to people. I mean, crucial to the existence of death metal as we know it. So, being able to hop in there and play his stuff, and realize that it's like, oh wow, okay, this is kind of like Venom, you know. And we got a D beat here, we got some fast double bass. And it's like, all right, but you know, it is vastly different. It, it is. While while it's close, there are a lot of uh, differences there. That uh, being able to jam with Cam has been pretty sweet. This new music we have is like, uh, I I really hope that fans like it because. It's around, it feels to us like if, uh, you know, From Beyond or In Human Condition, like right after that, the guys had a newer, more modern feel, but it's still the same band. So I think that'll, I think that's, that'll come through. When, when's, uh, when, when, when will that be coming out? Um, that is not, uh, we don't have information as far as when that's going to be released, but I think, I think we should have some new music soon here. Sooner than sooner than later, but uh, nothing officially booked yet as far as releasing. Um, has uh, COVID and the lockdown had any effect on you regarding um, recording and live work? Recording, no, because I own the studio, so it's in my uh, it's in my home. So it's very it's very easy. I actually I did this project where uh, Taylor uh, Taylor and I we're um, uh, we are in uh, Massacre together. We are in The Absence together. We're in uh, lots of projects together. And he actually lives close to me. And uh, it was like Saturday we were hanging out. And I'm like, dude, we should record a song today. Full start to finish. Write a song, record it, and release it today. I was like, we have to live stream because so well, we hold ourselves accountable. And let's just do it. And he was like, okay, fuck yeah. He's like, it's Saturday. Let's do a slam Saturday. Let's do like a suffocation style song. And it was like, hell yes. So he turned around, wrote the guitars. I listened to the song. We, we recorded the drums. I just wrote something, played the drums. And then he played bass. I wrote some lyrics. And then I sang. And then we mixed it, mastered it, put it online released it. Well, I made an album cover of sorts for it, and then we put it online and uh, on our band camp. And lo and behold, it was like a lot of fun. It was like, oh shit, you know, it was like, woo! 
let's do that again. But uh, we decided on, uh, so two days later, we decided on Monday we were going to do Swedish Death Metal Monday. And uh, then we were like, well, let's do, uh, let's see if we have any musician friends that are Swedish that might want to join in. So we asked our uh, our buddy Pontus, the singer for Entrails, if he wanted to sing, and uh, Johnny Peterson, he's the, He's he's another one like me that has a lot of projects. He's in a uh, Henry Kane and he's in a um, Womb Bath and God's Forsaken. He's got a lot of bands, and um, we asked him if he wanted to play bass, and he said, "Yep." And it was like, "Cool, we're going to be on a real tight confine. We'll finish at about uh, twelve o'clock our time, six o'clock your time, and if you guys are interested in doing something, then you'd have to write and record and send back, and then I would mix it, master it, put it online, and." Uh, they were totally down, and they, they delivered famously, you know? It's like, they delivered famously. And then, of course, uh, we released that song, and it was like a Grave, or it was like HM2 worship, like Grave, or, uh, you know, um, a Dissection, like any of, the, any of those bands that had HM2s. And uh, we were like, well, let's, let's roll a little bit further here. Let's, uh, let's see what else we got. Like, so then we storyboarded. And came up with nine other genre, pardon me, ten other genres that we wanted to hop around in, and just write stylistically. And then we wrote another list of potential musicians. And then, as they agreed, we started, uh, you know, checking them off the list and pairing them with songs. And uh, so we ended up doing twelve songs of this of this quarantine of like twelve different style tunes. And we wrote them all in one day and mixed and mastered and released it in one day. And uh, yes. So, uh, quarantine has been good for, for the music. There's more to life than just that. I've had some supplemented help from, uh, like, we got that stimulus here in the States, so that did help. And uh, I applied to this thing called Music Cares that like the Grammys run, and that is a, a bit of cash, which that came in, and that helps. I mean... Okay, you know, financially could be better, but it, as far as like creativity, creativity wise, it's all time high, all time Fantastic. high. Sometimes things happen for a reason, and, and I've heard from a lot of bands, you know, they've, they've done things during lockdown that they've never had time to do or never even thought of. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. I didn't even I didn't consider that. Uh, I hadn't heard that, so that's. That's pretty cool. How does how do you balance being a musician against front of house? I mean, do you find being a musician gives you an insight into front of house work, or do you find sometimes there's a bit of a conflict of interest that you, you know? Because front of house tend to tell us what we can't do <laughs> instead of what we can do. Sometimes. Yeah. Find well, I think I think it gives me an advantage. Um, it gives me it gives me a different vantage point for sure, and I think it gives me an advantage. Um, and I would say that because I've worked almost every job on a stage. Uh, I haven't guitar tech, not like you know officially, but I've drum tech. I've done monitors. I did monitors for uh, Sepultura. I, I tour managed them, and I did monitors for them. That was my first tour with them. Um, and then uh, I got some gigs. I, uh, I did monitors for Arch Enemy on a couple tours, um, as well as I drum tech for them. And and I've stage managed, and I've tour managed, and I've done all of these jobs in the music industry, you know, on stage. And I've also toured on stage and played on stage and had crew members of my own or, you know, worked with crew members. And, like, I have a real understanding of... I have a real-world understanding of the stage. And I can tell when someone's uncomfortable or if someone needs more. If I'm doing monitors, I mean, what what would I need? Or how do I... How would I like it done for me? You know, that really uh, really comes into play. And I know, like, the, the eternal struggle with uh, doing front of house is the guitar players are usually too loud or the, the bass players are too loud. You know, and if you have a really good working environment and they trust you and you say, 
let's turn that down, let's crank in your monitors, let's let's get it working to where it's good out here. We just have to sell the fish out here. The, the real thought process is how it's coming across. And when you level with people and you're and you've done it, I think it really helps. You know, there's not, I typically don't run into any kind of, of like, any real issues. It's, it's pretty sweet. It's, it's pretty sweet. I'm thankful for the ability to have that knowledge. Like, I mean, it really helps me. Like, uh, I was at anywhere. Let's just say I play anywhere and I go, oh, okay. Uh, the guitar player's cab, his monitor cab has, it's heavy in 160 hertz. Pull that down. Or if I hear feedback, I'm like, oh, okay, it's 2K, and that's coming from the bass player's wedge. Pull that down. I can help clean up a stage really quick and effectively. And uh, so it's, it's pretty pretty awesome knowledge to have. And I actually, I don't mind not playing. Like, uh, my last run of house gig was actually my last tour that, that I was able to do because, you know, COVID hit. Mm -hmm. um, but I was... Um, I was doing front of house for Warbringer and Enforcer on their last tour in the States. And, uh, you know, that was great. I really liked not getting sweaty. It was killer. I liked not having to deal with stage clothes. I liked, uh, I liked having my own spot, you know, doing my own thing. And I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, so I, I don't mind, do, I don't mind doing both. It's, I think it's pretty, it's pretty killer. And that all helps with studio stuff. Cause I mean, it's all the same thing. It's just a different platform. It's all the same. Man, it's all the same thing. It's just a different look. To it has a different skin. Like front of house and studio engineering is basically the same. I mean, some things are different, but for the most part, no. It's kind of similar thought process. I think it's it's helped develop your ear as well, hasn't it? I mean, I heard some of the stuff on on record label. Um, you know, some of it's very raw and very aggressive, but you've obviously got an ear for what works and what isn't just just noise. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. But you know, there is, let's face it, there's, a, there's, there's some really great music out there and there's some, there is some rubbish as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, it takes a good ear to, to siphon it out. And, and credit to you for that. Um, well, thank you. What is this King of All Kings about? Uh, well, it's just a play on my last name. You know, it used to be, uh, I've always said Kling Cobra or anything funny, Lord of the Klings, you know, anything that anything that uh, plays on my last name rhyming. And then I was in a, I was in a church and there was a thing, it was like the King of All Kings. And I'm like, oh, obviously the King of All Klings. You know, there we go. And, uh, and in a world of, uh, you are your one line tag that you write, um, it just becomes that. So it's pretty funny. Like, uh, my, uh, my singer for the absence, Jamie, he calls my house Kling's Landing. <laughs> and, uh, so he's like, yeah, so he'll be like heading up to Kling's Landing, you know, and he even, um, he commissioned a local artist to Tampa. Uh, he's there. Uh, So, I mean, it, it looks like the starting's... Oh. Hello, sorry about that. There's some gremlins in good. the system as usual. Yeah, normal, normal stuff. I just had to replace an entire... My entire studio computer I had to replace. I had to upgrade Pro Tools. I had to do so much, all because some update came out and uh, flipped me upside down. So uh, it was like, oh, uh, sweet. It? Yeah, it, it does. It's all good. Faster, faster computer for us. That so works out. Um, okay, you always seem to see the positive side of everything. Yeah, well, I mean, the other option is you just live in a negative world and then that's it. And that sounds uh, horrendous. That yeah. sounds uh, much, much scarier than just going, well, how do we fix it? I think that's why I excelled at front of house or tour managing. Because, I mean, th those are like really um, high tension situations mm -hmm. and if you just keep your head and you just think how do we make this work the show must go on move on like how do you adapt adapt and overcome um and i i do that with i try to do my best with positive i mean hell yeah if i'm negative like some days like the next person but if you can there's always a way to fix something <laughs> there's always like there's always some positive spin to it like like you said like maybe it was a blessing in disguise mm -hmm. i don't know the, i don't think you said the verbatim but 
it was a, a good thing, you know. Um, what else are you What else are you up to then? I mean, have you got time to do anything else? Well, I'm actually uh, my uh, my nine year old daughter. I was going to say my middle daughter, but that sounds like a I have five kids. Um, so my nine year old daughter and I are we just drove down to Tampa. Um, Taylor, the uh, guitar player for the Absence, and uh, he works at a place called Bay Stage, and it's like a lighting facility like so they rent out like lighting gear uh to people you know, putting on events um anything anything like it yeah big shows yeah um so we're we just drove down here today and we're setting up for a video shoot for the absence last week we shot a video through the whole weekend and then um uh, and then this weekend we're going to shoot uh, we're setting up today at his warehouse that he works at and they're they're gracious enough to, they're just like, yeah, we haven't had anything happening. Come, come take over, run all, whatever lights you want to set up, set up whatever kind of stage setup you want to set up. Just go for it. Like, it'd be awesome to be creative. And, uh, so we drove down here, uh, her and I, Alora and I, and we're going to go in and set this stage up and get ready for a shoot tomorrow. Fantastic. Sounds exciting. Yeah. Normal Friday. <laughs> normal Friday around... <laughs> Around Kling's Landing is, uh, you know, <laughs> with the to tie in that last conversation, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're back to the king of all Klings. I mean, it's not much on the website at the moment. Have you got plans to develop that at all? Yeah, there's plans. Um, man, I'm I'm trying my best to juggle it all. I had someone yeah. help me out with some social media stuff, and uh, that just felt weird. I don't know how to explain it, so it just did. Not that I, not that I'm opposed to having some help, but it's like, I don't know, it's it's difficult to have help because mm. it's like, well, what do I need to do? And it's like, there's so many areas of focus, um, and it's hard to like partition yourself into because when you require help, you also have to explain what you need help with, and then yeah. you end up kind of like doing it, and then that's like it's difficult to, it's difficult to do. It's just difficult, but there are there are plans to. To develop that, you know, my wife is actively developing her uh, her online persona as well, and information she has out there. And she's she's another fantastic talent. I mean, she does all these videos with us. She does all of our photography. She does a uh, photography for Venom Inc. and for Massacre. I mean, she's right there with me. Um, she's an incredibly uh, talented art, uh, fine art photographer, and we do uh, we collaborate on everything. We have an entire media house essentially under our roof, which is pretty sweet. You know, <laughs> it's pretty it must sweet. Be amazing, build. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually took our garage and I uh, I built it out to be a, an art studio for her, fully functional with a with sink and air and uh, yeah, every everything she needs a stock room, everything, the whole bit. I just had an idea, drew it on paper, uh, went and bought the materials, and just built it. That's so cool. So cool when when a couple support each other like that because you you build each other up, don't you? I mean, my, my husband yep. and I are the same. I mean, we, we created rocks from nothing, you know, because you just work oh, together, amazing. don't you? And when it works, it works. Yep, 100%. Yeah. Well, I, I look forward to seeing what, what else comes out and and look forward to listening to the new music as well because it sounds as if you've got some really cool ideas going on. It's it's in route. We got a uh, we got new music from the Absence, uh, new music from Massacre, and new music from Venom Inc. And uh, well, many more. We have another band called Root Spreader, and we have uh, a punk band called Four that we started with Species from Creator. That was kind of born out of the uh, well, it was a hybrid of how that was born. Last summer, Taylor and I were sitting around just having a laugh, and I'm like. I'm like, man, we need to start a, a, a punk band like like Pennywise or Black Flag, or we need to start a punk band like that. So he is crazy. He is a crazy person. And he went into his house, and he wrote seven punk songs. And then the next night, he wrote another six or seven punk songs. So that was last July. So this thing sat shelf. So whenever the quarantine hit, it was like, well, let's catch up on the punk band. Mm -hmm. So I played the drums for that, and we had already just worked on one of these songs, one of these one and one and done songs, with uh, Speezy from Creator, and also this guy uh, Brian Stevenson. Um, he plays in a band called Old James, a singer for that band. 
which is sort of like a rock band. And uh, we were like, man, they would be perfect in this punk band. And we just asked them, and we knew that both of them can turn around and get stuff done in a day, so we already know that they have that type of work ethic. And uh, boom, we started this punk band, and this punk band is nuts. It's like exactly what I wanted to listen to like when I was a kid. Mm. It is exactly it. It's the epitome of that. And uh, so then here you go. <laughs> and that's, that's going and up and rolling. So we'll have a record from that this year, and we already have a whole entire other record written. So we'll probably maybe even release two records this year just because there's just so much material. Fantastic. Well, I wish you the very best with, with all the projects you've got going on. And if you do get five minutes, you could always take up knitting or something to fill those five minutes. <laughs> you know, I see a free five minutes here. Let's, uh, you know, let's do something. <laughs> take up knitting. <laughs> all right. Well, all right, thank you so much for the you. interview, Jeremy. Very welcome. Thank you. Uh, thanks for all the great questions, and you know, thanks for having me. Very cool. Thanks very much, Jeremy. Bye bye for now.